Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Francois Joubé. I've been involved in reloading for the last uh, 40 years, learning a lot of reloading techniques and how to do things and how not to do things, specifically, you know, with the reloading of specific uh, cartridges and calibers. I've also been a competitive shotist for many, many years. And I've reloaded my own ammunition, you know, with which I have uh, won a number of competitions. And that is to prove to me that uh, what you reload and what you do is eventually what you get out of it. I'll be presenting a whole range of modules with regards to the reloading processes for the elementary or the basic, uh, the intermediate phase as well as the advanced uh, levels of reloading with all those techniques involved there as well. Uh, to begin with, we will just uh, go through a short uh, briefing on the different products that's available. Some of them, there's a variety of products and you'll see that I don't specifically use only one brand, but there's a variety of different brands which I use and which for me uh, gives me a full spectrum of whatever I need to do the job best. To begin with, this is just a, a, a preview of all the different types of case cleaning equipment. We're looking at tumblers, we're looking here at uh, stainless steel tumblers. We're looking at ultrasonic cleaners. And then you're looking at manual products as well that you can clean a case very, very ni nicely and very bright. These are some of the additives that goes in there. Here's some extra uh, equipment that you can use. Uh, it's a cloth with a chemical on it that makes the brass extremely extremely shiny and clean on the outside. The equipment that I'm going to show you now is not necessarily in sequence of how your reloading process is, but it's as close as possible. Okay, the next one up is the annealing equipment. Now, as I've said, annealing is not rocket science, but it's one of the most important things in preparation of your cartridge and the, the brass case itself to get longevity out of it. Uh, it there's hand models of different uh, flame intensity, smaller ones, you get slightly bigger ones, then you've got some really bigger ones. You've got temperature indicating liquids that helps you to anneal the case to the exact temperature. Then if you need to, and it's very nice to have something like this, is an autom automatic annealing machine. You place all your cartridges inside and you anneal it. And it's a very quick process. There's some of the products um, that's, it's very important to have uh, tools to measure. There's one saying is in, in re the reloading fraternity is to know is to measure. So whatever you do, you measure. Some of the first things that you need to require uh, is a, a proper vernier. There's ball micrometer that you need at some stage. There's a, a, a normal micrometer and then there's inside micrometers. These are all products that we'll discuss in detail and the application of it as we go along. There's also uh, some other products here that you require to pull uh, stuck bullets or bullets from your from your cartridge that's incorrectly loaded. Uh, there's hammers. As you can see, some of these have been used quite a bit over the years. And um, there's special tools. There's a lot of special tools that comes along with everything that uh, you do here to measure. Uh, one of the most important things to do uh, with your case is to trim the length for various reasons and there's a variety of very very good equipment on the market as you can see here uh, 
Yeah, here's a Wilson, that's top of the range. Then there's case trimmers like these that's available. There's universal case trimmers uh, that's also very, very nice to have. There's the Foster case trimmers. They are exceptionally uh, good as well for what they do. Then there's the mechanical ways that's very, very basic, but they are very efficient. So these are the case trimming tools that we look at. And then there's a variety of other special tools that we use to solve problems in the preparation of the case. One of the products that's more likely to be used by people that's in the intermediate or the advanced level of reloading is the case neck thickness uh, trimmers. Here you'll see some of the original ones that I bought many years ago from uh, Hornady. A uh, very nice trimmer. Uh, so is this one over here. It's a very strong, very bulky. Here's a case trimmer from Sinclair. Also, once again, you can't fault it. I've done many, many, many thousands of cases with a Foster trimmer. And then there's products made in South Africa from Sudami, which does exactly the same job. It's just uh, what you're willing to pay. Very expensive. They are durable. They do the job and you don't need to, to look very far to get a good quality product. The next lot of equipment is part of your case preparation. We're looking here at deburring and chamfering tools from Lyman, which is a very nice kit to have. This is to uniform the pocket, the primer pocket itself. And there's some more tools here that do the chamfering for you for LVLDs and uh, these are for the small primers uh, and they also have a variety of small little screwdrivers and, and pocket cleaners to use. Some of the other pocket cleaners and pocket uniformers, primer pocket uniformers that I've had for also for a very long time, these are K&M, they are very nice, they, they do the job very well and there's some others here that clean purely just a pocket cleaner. So once you've gone through that process and you need to, to scrape some of the carbon out, these are the, the type of tool to use. These are small primer pocket uh, uniformers. These are a very uh, common brand or a good brand of deburring and chamfering tool. There's one specific one that I like a lot and it's the Redding one. So you'll see the difference between the two. This one's got a shaft in the middle that protrudes through the uh, flash hole and that centers the cutting edges on the deburring side uh, quite nicely. So these are the, the, the uh, deburring tools. There's a nice VLD deburring tool that I also use. These are flash hole uniforming tools. There's a couple of variations in them. These are hand held, so this is for a small flash hole. These are for the larger ones. And there's also some others here that we have that can be adjusted according to the length of your cartridge, um, which serves the, 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 the job and, and, and the purpose very well. Okay, one of the products that's uh, important in the primer setting or primer seating side is the primer trays. It's got ridges on the inside and when you throw your primers inside and you shake it they all turn to the one side and you can then flip it to the other side and all the primers will lie inside and you can uh, pick it up with a tube. Here we've got uh, a lead dispensing uh, primer seater uh, with built-in primer uh, tray here I've got one of the older Lee versions that's been very useful. Here we have a Foster one, which you have a tube that's uh, filled with primers and that is set in and it loads the primers. Here I've got an RCBS. It's a tray and a seating tool all in one. So there's a variety of these available and they all do the job. So it's a matter of preference on what you think will work best for you. Okay, next up 
is the lubricants. There's a variety of different lubricants uh, that can be used. Here's some Bonanza lubricant, uh, which I got. Uh, there's a, a water-based uh, lubricant that I use. RCBS also makes water-based lubricants. Then there's uh, the Reading uh, Imperial Wax. That's also very nice for hand application. And then you need a pad uh, to lubricate your whole case if you go and uh, full size your, 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 your case. This here is a dry powder lubricant uh, or lubricating uh, uh, for, for dry neck lubrication. It's got a little small little ceramic balls in it and then you've got a graphite composite that's inside and that will lubric lubricate your necks properly so that's depending on your, your application and that will also go through in, in depth which one works best in what application for what cartridge and so on so we'll have a look a full look and discuss each and every one individually as we go along for the the basic reloader this is most probably not a necessity but for the intermediate and advanced this is definitely one of the things that you'll have to look at for accuracy and repeatability is your uh, concentricity gauges Here's a specific one from Hornady. It's a very robust uh, product with a mechanical gauge uh, on it. Here's one that I've been using for many, many years from Foster, which does the job just as well. And then uh, there's one that I've had now for a couple of years, which is for me also a very nice one. It's uh, running on ball bearings and you've got a, an option with a mechanical dial or an electronic uh, dial. Uh, this one works very well and it's available locally for us in South Africa. Uh, so yes, there's a variety of these. There's others on the market as well, but it's a question of what you like. When we get to these, I'll point out the pros and cons of each one of them and uh, then uh, hopefully that will help you to make up your mind and decide you know which one or which type will work out the best for you. There's something that you'll most probably not be able to get away with. You'll have to get something that can measure or weigh your powder uh, is a scale. There's a variety of scales available. Here's a very very small one if you want to quickly load one or two rounds. It's very quick. Here I've got a dispensing scale it's one from Lyman, it's the DPS 1200 or the 1200, which I've used for many, many, many years and it gave me very good results and I still use it. Then there's the mechanical scales. This one is from RCBS. And a mechanical scale is very, very accurate. And in the process of discussing these scales, I will show you how to calibrate your mechanical scale to measure not just by 0.1 grain but by 0.01 grain as well so you can very accurately see how mechanical scale can eventually serve you very very well there's uh, powder measures that goes along with that this is an rcbs uh, uniflow uh, so together with the uniflow and your mechanical scale you can do a lot of reloading of, of powder or dispensing of powder that's very quick and very efficient. Uh, recently I got uh, one of these RCBS scales. It's a dispensing scale similar to the Lyman. Um, I, I use both so it's, it depends on what I want to do and they, they both work very well. So all the scales that I have here is of, of good quality and there's other brands on the market as well that will serve the job just as well. Okay last but not least and that's most, most probably uh, one of the parts or one of the products that you will have for a very long time in your life it's it's something that one you buy it once and if you buy a good quality uh, product you will not regret it it will last you a lifetime here i've got an rcbs rock chucker this one is uh, 40 years old at the moment and I can still load straight rounds. 
in this uh, rock chucker. A couple of years ago, I had an itch and I bought myself a Foster, um, the coaxial press, which is also a very, very, very good press. It's, it's known in the market to be a straight loader. So your, your cartridges that you eventually load in one of these, you can almost be certain with the correct dies, uh, you will have a, a straight uh, round or a, or a run out of maybe a micron or, or so. And uh, something that uh, comes in last, but that's also very important is, is trays for your, your cartridges. So here you can put in your cartridges. There's different ones on the other side. There's for different calibers, different cartridge sizes, some of your pistol cartridges. So these are very, very nice. Uh, you can buy three, four, five, six of them, depending on how many rounds you're looking to re uh, reload. And then of course, at least, last but not least is a funnel without one of these you're going to have quite a problem in getting your powder in the case so uh, there's a variety of one there's a, a lee one and here's one from lyman that's a universal one that's uh, can take anything from a 22 two, two, three to your uh, 338 uh, 416 size but you'll hold you need to hold this one upright on the the case uh, these you can just put on and they will stay on without you having to hold them so these are some of the products that we'll discuss in detail and um, then something that you might consider in getting as well is a proper magnifying glass something with a light and if you really want to go big you can get something like this which is very nice for inspection of your cartridges once you've loaded them or your cases in the preparation uh, period uh, to inspect your case that's that's important so any one of these here uh, this is very nice this is very nice because you can have both hands available to do your inspection so for now that is basically the components that we'll be looking at uh, i will include uh, uh, some other products as well it, it wasn't possible to put everything on the table here there's still a lot on uh, the back here that we can discuss so hopefully uh, there's something here that you don't know and and uh, that i can maybe help you achieve uh, something in your reloading cycle to make you a better marksman or to make your rifle shoot better or something like that i hope you uh, enjoyed uh, the introduction of the the video and uh, if you like it you know please uh, click and share with uh, with your other uh, fellow reloaders and uh, click on the share button and uh, also for subscription click on the subscribe and you'll get the videos as we go along that'll be done within the next couple of weeks we will have the detailed videos for each product it will be the use of the product and it will also be at the same time a review of the specific products that that is going to be demonstrated thank you very much for your time and i hope you will see you again